Yo, New York City and Puebla, Mexico are the two places on this planet where you're most likely to find a sandwich. At Olin in East Harlem, it's a family business. Owner Juan Perez, his wife Leticia, and his sons Israel and Jonathan all play a role in the operation. And Juan's mother back in Puebla even sends mole straight from the motherland. But it starts in the kitchen with Juan. You don't see Gobedia as often in New York, but it makes the consomme taste different. The aforementioned mole, made by Juan's mother, contains a deep roster of ingredients, and the resulting plate is a reminder to not sleep on NYC's family-owned operations. Finally, the Juancho Samita is named after the man himself and contains a mix of potato and nopales that's reminiscent of the street food he grew up consuming, topped with homemade chipotle salsa. I was too full, so I only took a bite of this incredible flan. Bunk. Yo, let's spend a day of eating from street vendors in Queens, starting with tamales, sartenas, and espumilla. Jovita and her daughter, Rosa, are on 82nd and Roosevelt almost every day. And while their tamales come from the same home and same spices, they'll still compete with each other for your business. These tamales with mole, salsa verde con queso, and salsa roja con pollo are all essential. But the mole is my favorite. Grab an arroz con leche and let's keep it moving. Next door is Jesus and Victoria. Jesus has been making sartenas for 43 years. He learned the craft as a youth, working at his mother's bakery back in Bolivia. These are large soup dumplings, so don't spill the internal broth. Let's walk to Junction. You can take the seven, but the desayuno need to be digested. Now Junction Boulevard is a scene. The scent of roasted Ecuadorian ornado and fritara permeates the corner, but I crave sweets and got an espumilla made by Digna. This is soft, homemade meringue mixed with guava, popular in Ecuador and now Queens. Over the past 13 years, Digna has paid $26,000 in fines due to the difficulty of acquiring a street vending license. But she's still here. Yo, in part two, I'll take you out of Corona Plaza for lunch. Hit that follow button for the updates, you heard? Yo, let's spend a day eating from street vendors in Queens part two. I'm in Corona Plaza off 103rd. I started at Pinchoclo for Tripamishki, my go-to stop. Maria and family spent five days prepping the tripe, soaking it, curing it, then grilling it for that barbecue flavor. Next stop, La Dona ran by Gabriela for that taste of CDMX. Her pozole is heartfelt, bright red, and laced with pork and hominy. That fresh oregano accentuates the flavor. Our producer Rob sampled a Clyde dies next door. Maria runs this stand specializing in the Oaxacan delicacy. This plus size tortilla is stacked with beans, homemade chorizo, cecina, carne enchilada, cabbage, and Oaxacan cheese. I took a bite and felt an instant connection with the Zapotec and Mixtec Massive. Righteous. Finally, we got blessed with the Aguas Frescas, but that'll be its own video. So hit that follow for more content with street vendors, right? Bunk. Yo, this is the biggest selection of Aguas Frescas I've seen in New York City to date. Froilan Garcia offers 20 types of Aguas Frescas, which are made from blended fruit and H2O. Froilan recently became a community organizer, working with other vendors in Corona Plaza to keep the space clean and improve collaboration. But his biggest dream for the future is to acquire street vending licenses for his fellow vendors. There are only 853 licenses available, a cap set in 1979. I reflected on this as I sipped shots of aguas frescas, pepino or cucumber with chia and lime, mame, a fruit that's native to Mexico, and maracuja. Each is a delight and I can't help but think that Queens is a better place because Froilan is here. Bunk. Oh, it's so good. Yo, finishing my day of eating from street vendors. We gotta talk about these chalupas on Junction Boulevard. The first thing you notice at chalupas are trequile, as that is in front of a chipotle. The second thing you peep is the bucket, which is full of lard, aka manteca, essential for that flavor. The third thing you see is the pot, also called an olla, where trequile and Aztec. From this, you can draw a cup of cafe de olla, a Mexican coffee that's sweetened with piloncillo. It's righteous, and I took the mug home. 
From there, you're free to eat chalupas from Cleo, whose recipes, clothing, and culture come from the Estado de Puebla. The stainless steel comal, where tortillas swim in lard, is made especially for chalupas. That high heat caramelizes the green and red salsas onto the tortillas, which are then stacked with shreds of beef in between. I was content at this point and cheerfully shared with my neighbors. But yo, once I took a bite, my appetite reignited. I proceeded to take these chalupas down. It's hard to describe how amazing it was. Cleo says she got the recipe from her ancestors, from the terrains of Puebla to the galaxy of Queens, on Junction, in front of a Chipotle. Show, you can't make this up. Not just restaurants and eateries, but street vendors too, to find a cultural fabric of communities. Make sure you support your local street vendors, aight? Bunk. Yo, this mochi waffle is righteous. Keep watching for more left field platteur. It's Righteous Eats. We're at New York Titline in Bushwick, Brooklyn, run by two brothers from Mexico. Chef Julio learned how to cook while working as a waiter by picking up techniques he saw in WD-50 and Dirty French. He opened New York Titline six years ago and spent the first five years working front of house in other restaurants in the evening. That's why he specializes in brunch. It's the only time he could open. Now he's fully dedicated to New York Titline. Here are my essentials. Chilaquil is made with salsa roja, which Julio learned from his mother with carnitas cooked in Coca-Cola. Pancakes a la mangonada, inspired by the popular mango and tagine drink from Mexico. Chef, you got something with this one. Mochi waffles with shaved chocolate and passion fruit caramel. You are ready. Want to see more from New York Titlon? Let me know in the comments. Restaurants define the cultural fabric of communities, so support your local eateries. Bunk. Yo, when the New York Tourism Board, NYC and company, asked me to give them a tour of Queens, my thoughts went to Corona Plaza, a place where you see hands at work, a place where you find the many states of Mexico represented, and a place where immigrant women make a living. Women like Xochitl, whose recipes for sweets have been passed down through generations. Her Las Paros, made with a dizzying blend of handmade syrups poured over ice with condensed milk, are essential. Here's a rundown of everything we sampled that day, with support from Street Vendor Project. Tamales from Ana. If you need to feed a squad, start here. The Verde con Pollo is righteous. Quesadillas from Doña Lora. Handmade tortillas with fillings like flor de calabaza, a.k.a. squash blossom. Pan de feria from Antonia. This vendor represents Glascara, the smallest state of Mexico, and her bread is soft and sweet. And finally, Mercedes, who makes huaraches with beans laced in the tortilla and football-shaped clacoyos. Get a clacoyo in the style of the Mexican flag with green salsa, quesillo, and longaniza sausage. Corona Plaza has one of the few self-organized vendor associations in New York. With our support, the area can continue to flourish. Thank you to NYC and company for supporting our street vendors. Bunk. Yo, we're at Tacos El Bronco. 15 years of service has earned them a reputation as masters of the craft. The amount of al pastor Samuel has carved and the amount of tortillas his hands have blessed deserves trophies. So you can't imagine his surprise when I ordered a combo he's never seen before. Here are my essentials. Buche and chorizo. Peep the pork stomach simmering in broth. Now combine that with chorizo. It's like gold tanks of tacos. Al pastor. Classic for a reason. Hit it with limon and sprinkle it with salt as per Samuel's suggestion. Lingua. If you're a carnivore, appreciate all parts of the animal, including this tender meat. And yo, complete the cipher with the cabeza while you're at it, and down it with jarritos, bunk. Yo, I'm here with Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and together we learn two secrets behind Avelius Tamales in Corona, Queens. The first secret is Avelius Sarsas, which are heavily portioned until it was almost overflowing, which keeps the masa moist like lotion. That's poetry in motion, worthy of commotion, from AOC word. But the other secret is Evelia herself, two decades as a street vendor, taught her not just the craft, but the importance of community, and her perseverance in the face of endless challenges to achieve her dream of opening this brick and mortar with her son is wildly inspirational. Peep our YouTube video for her full story. Your vote can affect someone's ability to live the American dream. As an immigrant myself, who went through the rigorous process to get my green card and eventual citizenship, I know this too well.
So take it from us. Go out and vote, y'all. And don't vote for whack people. Nah. <laughs> All right, peace and blessings. Yo, if you've never eaten grasshoppers, keep watching to peep the details. It's Righteous Eats. We're at Michelada House on La Russi. Owner Jose Luis Diaz opened during the pandemic with a sturdy menu of Micheladas, which are beer cocktails seasoned with Valentina, Chamoy, Tahine, and concoctions that'll astonish the less enlightened. Plus, Jose cooks staples from his hometown CDMX, like the Chilaquiles Torta. Here are my essentials. Chapulín tacos. These salty and crunchy grasshoppers are cooked with cebolla and chiles, high in protein and low in carbs, you heard? Poca Madre Michelada is a medley of sweet, sour, and spicy with the rim decorated with shrimp and cucumber dough. Chicharrón preparado. Picture a carpet of pork rinds stacked with crema, vegetation, and pickled pork skin, sinfully tasty. Restaurants that find a cultural fabric of communities. Let me know what other Mexican dishes I should consume. Bunk. Yo, I don't think I gave enough props to the Chilaquiles Torta at Michelada House. Yours truly was occupied devouring Japulín tacos and sipping this triple large Michelada. But on a weekend, I reminisce about Torta de Chilaquiles and how the owner Jose Luis Diaz merges fried chips with salsa verde and epazote. He then constructs them on a toasted telera with crema, cotilla, aguagate, then that fried chicken cutlet, aka melanesa. This is carb loaded, heavy duty nourishment. It is righteous. Leave a comment if your country has a dense sandwich I should consume. Bunk.